One of the most spectacular supercars from the 1980s might have looked like a Porsche 911, but the 959 was an altogether more exotic machine. We hesitate to call any car perfect. The absence of flaws in any product of human endeavor is extraordinarily rare. But we have just returned from West Germany, where we finally got a chance to drive a Porsche 959 on the street, and the word perfect is difficult to avoid. What single word more accurately describes a car that combines race car performance with luxury sedan comfort, that is equally adept at commuting through rush hour traffic, profiling in jet set locales, negotiating blizzard swept mountain passes, and outrunning light airplanes? The Porsche 959 can accomplish almost any automotive mission so well that to call it perfect is the mildest of overstatements. Power and speed are the core of the 959's excellence. With rocket sled acceleration and the highest top end we've ever measured, the 959 stands alone at the pinnacle of production car performance. If that sounds like hyperbole, how does a 0 to 60 mile per hour time of 3, 6 seconds strike you? Or 100 miles per hour from rest in a near 8, 8 seconds, 120 miles per hour in 12, 4 seconds, and 140 miles per hour in a tick less than 20 seconds? The 959 devours the standing quarter mile in 12 seconds flat, with a terminal speed of 116 miles per hour. We recorded these figures at the Hockenheim Ring, the site of this year's German Grand Prix, employing a starting procedure recommended by Manfred Banter, the project director of the 959 program. The drill was to switch the 959's programmable four-wheel drive system into its locked setting, engage low gear, wind the engine to 7,000 revolutions per minute, and drop the clutch. The result was a cloud of rubber dust from four spinning Bridgestone RE71 gumballs, and a car that disappeared as if shot from a cannon. As remarkable as these acceleration runs were, the 959 was just as impressive when accelerated in a more normal fashion. In tests with no wheel spin and minimal clutch slip, it sprinted from rest to 60 miles per hour in only 4. 9 seconds. Unlike most ultra-performance cars, the 959 is astonishingly easy to drive. This is especially true if one starts in the lowest of the transmission 6 ratios, though Porsche, inexplicably, discourages this practice in on-road driving by labeling the bottom gear with a G, for gel and terrain. When starting off in G, minimal clutch slip is needed to help the engine onto its power bank. The clutch action is on the heavy side but very progressive, and stirring the shifter is a delight. The lever has been moved about 3 inches rearward from the usual 911 location, and the linkage has none of the rubbery feel we've come to expect in rear engine cars. Instead, the 959 shifts with a wonderfully slick and fluid action. And with 6 ratios to choose from, the driver can run the engine either mild or wide. These two personalities are clearly defined by the transition from single to twin turbo operation. The 959's engine, all 24 valves, 4 overhead camshafts, twin turbochargers and intercoolers, 2 water-cooled heads, and 6 titanium connecting rods of it, is essentially a domesticated version of the 962's racing powerhouse. Such engines thrive at high RPM but generally are weak at low engine speeds. The solution in the 959 is a staged turbocharger system. At low RPM, all of the exhaust flow is directed through just one turbocharger, bringing it quickly up to speed. Boost starts to build at 1,500 revolutions per minute. By about 3,000 revolutions per minute, the peak pressure of 14.5 pounds per square inch is available. The second turbocharger cuts in at about 4,300 revolutions per minute, uncorking the engine's high-speed breathing abilities. The 959, in turn, surges forward as if a second set of cylinders were activated, developing 444 horsepower at 6,500 revolutions per minute. The 959's two. 8-liter flat 6-cylinder produces more than 156 horsepower per liter. To put that into perspective, the Callaway Corvette's twin-turbo V8 has twice the displacement of the 959 engine that produces about 100 horsepower less, for a specific output of only 60 horsepower per liter. In spite of its heroic output, the 959's all-aluminum power plant is always smooth and refined. It idles evenly at 800 revolutions per minute. It can be driven away at 1000 revolutions per minute in top gear without a shutter or a lurch, and it's quieter than a production 911 power pump. When it climbs into the boost mode, its power surge feels like a strong push rather than a hard punch. This softness around the edges of the awesome power curve lets the driver use the 959's tremendous thrust with confidence. Project director Vandal believes strongly that speed without security and stability is senseless, and we were eager to see whether his car would deliver both elements of the equation. The 959 was in our hands for only 24 hours, so we had no time to find a track where we could measure its top speed. We had to do it the German way, on the Autobahn. We chose to run at night, when traffic was minimal, but the conditions were less than ideal. Our test stretch was only two lanes wide, 
and it wasn't perfectly straight. Nevertheless, we clocked a two-way average of 190 miles per hour, without ever feeling as though we were driving on the hairy edge. According to the factory, the 959 will do 195 if given enough room. Driving at such speeds is completely comfortable in the 959. Porsche claims that it develops no aerodynamic lift at high speed, and we have no reason to doubt that. In our testing, the 959 never felt right, and it always tracks straight and true. Neither side winds nor the weights of slow-moving trucks seemed able to deflect it from its path. Indeed, every aspect of the 959 promotes confidence in its high-speed abilities. The power steering has the pronounced self-centering of a 928. Tight door and blast seals limit wind noise. The brakes are powerful and fade-free no matter how hard or at what speed they're applied. At almost any cruising speed, the engine seems to be loafing. And the control arm suspension keeps a tight rein on body motions but still absorbs bumps with supple strokes. In fact, the 959 rides more comfortably than the 911. In addition to its superb high-speed stability, the 959 is an extremely capable backroad runner. Although it doesn't come in with the sharpness of, say, a Z51 Corvette, it responds very progressively to the helm and exerts a tenacious grip on the pavement. We tested it on both a 197-foot and a 633-foot skid pad at Porsche's Visoc facility and measured lateral accelerations of 0, 87 and 0, 89 grams, respectively. Controllability at the limit was excellent. Too much power in the car understeer. Backing off of the throttle diminished the understeer and kept the tail obediently in line. We further explored the 959's handling on the short course at Hopenheim. The only way we could make its tail swing wide was to brake hard and late into comers. We could then hold the tail out with power, but the chassis was unstable in that attitude. It was much more rewarding to enter a comer conservatively, then take advantage of the four-wheel drive and the tire's prodigious grip by applying power early and exiting very fast. The same approach worked nicely on the road as well. Much of the credit for the 959's unparalleled combination of performance and refinement must go to the high technology incorporated in its design. In this respect, the 959 stands in stark contrast to certain Italian exoticos, in which electronic fuel injection is still something of a novelty. The Porsche's blend of low-speed refinement and high-end power would be impossible without its Bosch Motronic engine control system to optimize fuel metering, ignition timing, and turbocharger boost for all operating conditions. Likewise, its unusually broad power band could not have been achieved without the staged turbocharger setup. Technology also serves to harness this considerable power. The Porsche control coupling four-wheel drive system distributes power to the wheels according to the dynamic loading on the tires, providing extraordinary stability and handling consistency at all speeds. The damping of the three-position shock absorbers increases progressively with speed to provide proper ride control without excessive harshness. Automatic ride height control allows the springs to be calibrated for handling without regard to the vagaries of payloads and vertical aerodynamic forces and the 959's tire pressure monitoring system ought to discourage its drivers from trying to set speed records when their tires are underinflated. Not only do these advanced technical features work well, but every detail of the 959 has been fine-tuned to the NTH degree. In view of the car's very limited production, it's amazing how well-developed it is. The 959's body and chassis are as solid as any on the road. The wind noise, mechanical vibration, and road rumble that intrude into its cabin are remarkably well attended. Its air conditioning, power windows and seats, sound system, and other luxury features work as well as any catalogs. Such special details as aerodynamically efficient, wide-angle exterior mirrors and telescoping headlight washers have been fully developed. There is even a fist-sized planetary gearbox adapter to make it easier to apply the correct amount of torque to the magnesium wheel central locking nuts. We did detect a few flaws during our 24 hours with the 959. Its ancestry is all too apparent in its dashboard layout, which adds several controls to the 911's already haphazard arrangement of switches. Its power brakes are a trifle sensitive to the first portion of pedal travel. Its power steering feels somewhat artificial, with limited feedback from the front tires and corners. And its stock 911 seats provide too little lumbar support. The most disturbing flaw of all is that you can't buy a 959. Not even if you have enough money nearly a quarter of a million dollars stuffed under your mattress. Porsche has sold out the entire production run of 200 cars, none of which was built to American specifications, and it does not intend to build any more. In price, in availability, in performance, the 959 defies comparison with lesser machinery. The ultimate automobile, it is to any ordinary car as the F-15 is to a hang glider. We cannot, in the final analysis, call it perfect. But if you want to call the Porsche 959 the best car in the world, you will get no argument from us.